Joker is an interesting one because it, it really it's uh, a little more advanced than Batman. Batman, you can get away with hiding a lot because of the cowl. The Joker, to me, is all about taking all those elements, the sausage, the pie, the awning, the pyramid, the door, uh, the egg, and exaggerating all those. And the great thing about the Joker is that uh, everyone draws him really differently. If you look at a Brian Boland Joker to, um, gosh, a Frank Miller Joker to a, a Greg Pula Joker, everyone does it differently, but it's all recognizably Joker. And to me, that's a real strong, uh, it shows a real strong sense of design and, and just this very innate coolness about the character that transcends individual styles. So. Um, so he sort of the same thing, it's just an egg. Might be a little more elongated because his face is a little narrower. Same back door, kind of longer pyramid, bigger chin, <laughs> pie, same awning, crop of hair, thinner cylinder underneath, right? And so to me, people really pick up on detail and they, they like the, the, the anatomy or whatever, but at the core of a drawing it is this, right? This is what's called the uh, the negative shape, ne negative space, it's the area around the figure. This is called the silhouette. It's basically the shape that a form takes up on the page. And that is probably the most critical thing you can think of. So most people really focus on the actual drawing itself and, and neglect to notice and see what the silhouette is doing. But the silhouette really is, is super important. So when you sit down and construct some drawings, you should really think about your proportions and this length versus this length, this height versus this width, uh, what's going to be prominently sticking out, what's not, and uh, that will make a big difference in your drawings. I usually start with the eyebrows. The eyebrows really capture uh, a lot of the soul of a character. Uh, these eyebrows are swiped from Jack the King Kirby. So if you go back and look at his, his uh, early X-Men work, Professor X had these crazy uh, eyebrows. And no one's eyebrows really go like this. But they look cool and they express a lot because it's like this, you know, it's like a lightning bolt. But once you put the other parts of the uh, body on top, or the face on top of it, you don't even really realize how oddly shaped they are and how angry these caterpillars look. Um, and then he's got a little bit of a wide-eyed kind of thing going on with his eyes. And that eye is actually held into your head by your eyelid. And then whatever this thing is underneath here. Right? And if you didn't have those pieces of flesh, the eyeball, I think it's stuck inside that socket, but if there's enough force, they would actually pop out. So what happens is if you have a shadow, this thing basically casts a shadow underneath here. Right? You can go all the way over, or you can just do a little bit. If the light's over here, if the light's up here, you can go all the way underneath that eye. Now, same thing I was talking about, uh, drawing the hair by drawing the shadows of the clumps of hair rather than the drawing hair itself. You can draw the nose by just drawing the shadow of the nose itself. And the mind kind of fills in the rest. Same thing with teeth. You don't have to draw individual teeth. You can draw the shadows where the teeth meets the gum. Right? And then little shadows where uh, the teeth meet one another. And so with the Joker, I actually draw individual lashes because like I said, it is creepy looking. And it goes to kind of heighten that uh, Same thing, I'm not drawing the hair, I'm drawing the, the shadows of the clumps of hair. 
and we'll just put a couple of wisps of shadows to kind of suggest scale. So there's big clumps and then there's individual hairs that kind of flow out from that. same uh, shadowing principles behind Batman, except the shapes are different, so they cast slightly different lengths of shadows, but it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> so you also see how uh, super important the eyes are to the drawing, particularly the Joker. And when I drew them in hush, sometimes I made one eyeball, uh, the pupil, much smaller than the other, just to kind of really show the distortion of his uh, particular anatomy. And then I'm going to even take that black area, and just like with those gradations I showed you here, I'm going to take that black and I'm going to go and, and create a middle gray, light gray. both Batman and the Joker is the more shadows you throw on them, the cooler they actually look, so, um, which is not true of a lot of characters. So those shadows are really just the other side of the shoulder and showing them in shadow versus this area that's in light, just the same way you have a cube. really just that side of the cube. This thing casts a shadow. a little less than parallel, just again to make it feel a little more organic. That's a joker. Um, you can take your whiteout stick and uh, go in and capture some areas that uh, you over inked. Sears, did Sears do a, a Man of Steel tie-in comic book? Was that was it digital only, or was it actual physical? I'm looking at my wife like she would know the answer, but she's like, <laughs> uh, 
Walmart did a uh, advanced screening of Man of Steel. Does anyone have a ticket from that? Come on up. Uh, all right, I'll take that. All right, what's your name? Reggie. All right.